This is not a very interesting shot. It just isn't. There's nothing really to draw your eyes to. I mean, you'll get bored of looking at my face after a little while. Uh, so many YouTubers have their videos just this for so long. And back in the day, they used to make it interesting. The only way they knew how, which was every five seconds, they would cut and they'd be over here. And then they would cut and they would be over here. And then they would cut and be over here. Or over here. Or over here. You know? It's just kind of bullshit. It was just a gimmick, and it kind of stopped because everyone sort of realised it was a bit of a gimmick, and it it was a, a boring way to make videos interesting. It was not actually interesting, it just had the illusion of interest. Your brain is hardwired to look right here at my face. You are born with a preference for human faces. You're just like two eyes and a mouth. That's why you see it everywhere. If I do, I don't know, if I do this, you see a face. It's not, it doesn't look anything like a face. The proportions are all wrong. Eyes aren't just dots. They've got all this complicated stuff. When have you ever seen a mouth that looks exactly like that? Never. But your brain is predetermined. It's, it's, it's made to look for faces. And that's why we can just about stand watching a video that looks like this. Because you've got a face, right? And what really matters is never the video. What matters is actually the words that I'm saying, right? Of course, we all know this. You don't watch a video in general to watch the video. You watch it because you want to know what I'm saying, you want to listen to me, you want to hear my words, you want to know what's going on in here, or maybe you want to know what's going on in there, but I'll get to that. So this is not a very interesting shot. How can I fix that? How can I make it a more interesting shot? You know, I have my methods, but, but what, let's, look at, let's look at some of the history. Maybe I should do this. Now this is much better. Look, you got all sorts of visually interesting stuff to do. See, games are designed from the ground up to be visually interesting, right? This game is incredibly visually interesting. You got all sorts of shit moving around the screen. Even the camera's moving. I can't do that. I can't have a camera move. This isn't a film. I don't have a camera operator. I'm not Casey Neistat. I can't move my camera around. So this is great. Look, you got the environments changing as the camera moves from left to right. Plus, there's another narrative to follow. There's a B plot because you can actually follow what's going on in the game as a secondary plot to what I'm saying, which uh, instantly makes the video way easier to watch, right? Because not only do you now have to pay attention to my words, you have something extra to entertain you. You can actually pay attention to the gameplay. And a lot of YouTubers have done this throughout the years. A lot of YouTubers have done this throughout the years. In, in fact, for a long time, it was the most popular... Or in fact, it might still even be the most popular way to just simply say your thoughts. How many times have you clicked on a channel or a video with an interesting title or thumbnail and expecting to hear some sort of insightful vlog or commentary or maybe even some sort of mini documentary and instead what you get is some dude playing Call of Duty and rambling about that time his girlfriend broke up with him or that time his mum caught him smoking weed. How many times has that happened to you? Maybe never. Maybe this is just a me thing that I'm applying to everyone else. But I'm going to take a wild guess and say that uh, I am not the first person to have experienced that. Um, you know, it's, in fact, a lot of YouTube channels that have went on to become pretty big started off by doing that. Um, uh, for example, The Syndicate Project, who you may know from being involved in a, a pretty big scandal a little while ago, with regards to a Counter-Strike gambling website that he hadn't admitted that he owned or some bullshit like that, I don't remember. And we found this new site! He started off by doing the exact same thing. His original thing was he would record Call of Duty and uh, commentate over it separately. Not like I'm doing now, because I'm actually commentating over it right uh, live, because I couldn't be bothered to put in the effort to go back and re-record audio over this footage. So I'm just playing at the same time as I talk. But um. See, this is quite interesting, but there's a few problems here. Firstly, is what I just said. I'm playing while I'm talking, and that means that not all of my attention is devoted to talking about the subjects I'm talking about, which is easy when I'm talking about something that is not particularly difficult to talk about, like right now. But what if I just wanted to start talking about, I don't know, philosophy, or something something that, that required my full attention to, to, to discuss, something where I needed to remember a lot of things? What if I was trying to talk about, I don't know, Elder Scrolls lore. I don't even know anything about Elder Scrolls lore, but for some reason that seems to be a bit of a meme right now, is knowing a lot about Elder Scrolls lore. What do, I don't know shit about Elder Scrolls lore. I could tell you about Portal and Half-Life lore. Um, you know about the... I don't know how much is actually regularly known about Portal and Half-Life lore, but you know about the Borealis? I know it shows up in 
in Half-Life at some point, uh, but did you know it also shows up in Portal at some point? Did you know that the Borealis is actually where the Portal devices were originally uh, prototyped? That's why the Borealis is, is in both games, because the Borealis, which is a big boat if you don't know, um, was basically developed to test the Portal device, um, except that then it was much bigger and they didn't know where it was going to end up, so they basically created a big wormhole. Now, you know, it's quite difficult to talk about something like that and be interesting while I'm also trying to play this game. But but there's a bigger problem than that. What the fuck is this game? Have any of you guys ever played this game? It's called Floating Point. It was free on Steam. And it's a it's actually a really fun, solid, like relaxing game to play. It's a I'd recommend it since it's free. I think it's free anyway. But uh, it's a it's a really fun game. But uh firstly, it's I guess I guess it's not it's not something you can play for like a whole day really it's, it's got pretty it's got two buttons it's got left and right click and that's it all you do is 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 collect these little bars right but but you don't know that because you've probably never even seen this game before unless you have in which case good on you you're very you're very clever and special and uh, your parents love you very much but um for for the rest of you it's kind of hard to relate to what's going on right now right it's kind of hard to relate you don't know you don't really know what's going on um, so hold on, let me let me try something else real quick. Side note: I have been playing this game for literally years, and I only just discovered that you can zoom in and out by using the scroll wheel. I'd never even attempted to use the scroll wheel before, uh, just now. Literally, I've been playing this game for at least three years. Like maybe once every month or something, I'll sit down and play this game for like a few minutes, and then get bored. Uh, and I only just discovered that you can zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. You can zoom very in. When the, would you ever need this? <laughs> when why did they put that in the game? And right, now this, this is something familiar. You might recognize this, right? What is going on right now? This is CSGO surfing. I feel like there was some big channel a while ago that did something like this and talked over it. But um... This is also quite a relaxing thing, but you know, maybe maybe we need something extra. I feel, still feel like I'm missing something important. Also, I don't have this map set up correctly, so it's gonna say round draw when I die. Um, you know, I feel like we're missing something. Could it be maybe this? Ah, now that is pretty interesting. Here I am now. You got two things to pay attention to. If you don't want to look at the game, you can look at me. Or if, if something interesting happens in the game. Which it probably won't, because that's the entire point of using CSGO surfing, because nothing interesting happens, except that I die constantly, because I suck at CSGO surfing. Um, you can see my face, you can see my lips as I talk, you can see my reaction to things I say, my emotions, you can get a, more of a sense of, of my gestures, the things I'm saying, you know? It's pretty interesting, but I still feel like we're missing something. There's something... I don't know. There's some, something the best videos, the best films even, have that this just lags. What is it? Is it the subject I'm talking about? Maybe. Maybe I need more interesting... Ah, I know what it is. How did I die there? Facial reaction. Um, I know what we're missing, anyway. We're missing some some nice relaxing background music. Let's put some of that on um, me and everything. I think there you go, a little bit of meta humor where I pretend to talk to my future self. Um, even though I have already planned this video out and know that I'm going to put this to in editing. That's not true. Maybe it is true. Maybe I never plan anything. Of course I never plan anything. Um, so now we got this nice music going on in the background. It's not too loud. It's it's nothing too nothing with vocals, of course. That would be that would be awful. You don't want to have something with vocals. Look, they got a snowball for the game for Christmas. Isn't that cute? Um, yeah, you don't want something too too distracting with vocals or anything, because then you wouldn't be able to hear me speak. Which of course is still the central point. Of, the point of this is just visuals uh, and something extra to keep your interest while I'm speaking. But I still feel like we're missing something. I can't quite put my finger on it. It feels like there's somewhat of a disconnect. Wh what am I saying right now? What am I talking about? I'm talking about this video itself, the meta aspect of YouTube. I'm talking about cinematography and filmmaking in a sense. I'm talking about, you know, that sort of shit. I'm not talking about Counter-Strike surfing. There's disconnect here. 
The visuals do nothing to enhance the message or the words that I'm saying. Although of course they do because I'm literally talking about the visuals. But in general, if this was any other video and I was talking about something that happened in my day or I was talking about... I don't know, anything. I was talking about something, some philosophical something, or whatever, you know. The visuals are essentially just random, just random noise to keep your eyes entertained while your ears do all the work. That doesn't feel right. YouTube, I mean, video as a whole, film, cinema, it's a visual medium. There's a reason you're not listening to this as a podcast. Maybe you are, maybe you're tapped over, in which case, you're, you're, you, 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 I mean, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. But, um, <laughs> don't worry, I'll get to you. But, uh, you know, we have this ability to put visuals on our things, and yet, I'm not using it. All I'm doing is putting basically the visual equivalent of white noise to distract you from the fact that there's nothing actually interesting or um, engaging or nothing's it doesn't emphasize what I'm saying it's just unrelated random shit you know speaking of unrelated random shit so many of you probably already know the story of this before I even tell you but in case you don't already know the story there's a guy called Digibo who makes YouTube videos and uh, I, there's a guy called me and I also make YouTube videos and I made a YouTube video a little while ago called Hidemari Sketch Bath Scenes In-Depth Analysis and uh, Digibro over there, he also makes videos about anime and recently he talked about my Hidemari Sketch Bath Scenes Analysis video uh, because I paid him money to do so which was kind of a mistake but you know, whatever uh, and uh, one of the things he said in that video is he talks a lot about stuff that's unrelated, that's seemingly unrelated like I'm talking about seemingly unrelated things in that video like superhuman and the, the GDGD fairies and Lane, which isn't really related to the Hidemari bath scenes, is it? And, and, and you know, when I'm, when I'm filming it, I'm not filming my face. I don't show my face in the video. I'm filming unrelated shit. I'm filming a fan, or I'm filming a beer, or my floor, or just the, the screen, you know? Why, why, the unrelated stuff, you know? He sort of built this up, and I uh, Was it unrelated, was it? <laughs> was it unrelated? Or, Perhaps, perchance, did I put some thought into these visuals? Did I want to have something that wasn't this? Did I want to have something... You know, this is better than this. Right, this this is better than this marginally. Why is it better than this? Because not only have you got a face to focus on and some context, some gestures to the words, but you also the movement of the background keeps you extra interested. And it encourages me, the talker, to gesture more, to just gesticulate, I love that word, gesticulate more. Because I'm up and active, my entire body language changes, and now everything I say seems to have more emphasis because I'm walking around and I'm, I'm, I'm gesticulating and, and all that stuff. And plus the camera angle's changing, I could be really far away from you like this, you could see my unmade bed, or I could be really close up. And that allows me to have some sort of direction. Like uh, if I say something, if I want to show you something, I can be like, over here, you can see my, my monitor for my Raspberry Pi, or if I want to say something with emphasis, I can bring you right in here, you know? It allows me a little more freedom, it allows a little more expression, and, and now we're getting something, right? Now we're getting to something. We're getting close to visuals that actually emphasize the meaning, except really, it's just a, I wouldn't call this meta interpersonal interaction, which is just something I came up with right goddamn now. Um, as I was talking. This is not literally me having a conversation with you, but this is a a, a meta version, a, um, a, a version of what it's like to have a conversation with you in person, but, but through the medium of video, right? Because obviously if I'm in person, you're not actually moving around like this, but it feels like that. When I get more intense, you're, you're right there. You can see all the motion in my eyes. And you know, the world's always moving behind people. There's cars and shit going by. You know, it's just like a, a version, an emulation of that, uh, like a meta version of that, because obviously it's not really that, is it? It's just, it's just an emulation. Um, but it doesn't actually have anything to do with what I'm saying. Still doesn't have anything to do with what I'm saying. 
I, I know, I, I can go on about this for fucking ever. I, you know, I could give more examples of how different YouTubers do it. Some people these days have a lot of infographic shows. That's one thing that, that's, that's very popular. Um, I'm actually going to put this down because it's quite heavy. I don't know how YouTubers do this for hours, but it's heavy carrying a camera around. <laughs> so there's a billion different ways that I can make a YouTube video interesting. Infographics is a commonly used one, I literally just said that, but you've also got those channels that will use um, stock footage. They'll buy stock footage or, or, or from like video blocks or something to put over their, 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 their words and then they'll have something vaguely related playing. Uh, and that way they don't have to shoot anything that they did that wouldn't be easy to shoot and you get relatively relevant visuals albeit without so much control because you have only a select amount of stock footage to choose from um, now but but that's just literally the exact style of the video there's even more interesting ways you can do it there's, there's even more stuff you can do with the medium in, ter in, in, in terms of strengthening reinforcing your message that you're saying with your words with your visuals or even better adding a completely new aspect. You don't just have to use visuals to reinforce what your language is saying, you can have the visuals actually say something in addition to um, to what you're saying. This is why gameplay is, is good, because the, the visuals are actually saying there's another narrative going on. While I'm talking to you and you can hear my words, you can also see like, oh wow, he's on a kill streak or whatever, with the Call of Duty example. And now here's a common one that people will do. Um, now, a common element people will use in their videos that's kind of separate from the main video, but, but emphasizes the point or adds another point is what I just did. Drinking wine straight out of the bottle or drinking alcohol at all on camera. Uh, Digibo does this a lot as I was just talking about him, but you know, a lot of other people do it too. Um, uh, so in this example, I'm drinking wine on camera straight out of the bottle. Uh, why am I doing such a thing? Well, let me talk about it. Uh, it's supposed to come off, as you can see, I'm drinking wine out of the bottle here, so it's supposed to come off as if I was already be drinking wine. Uh, and this is not just a prop, but, uh, but, but, but it's, this is not true. It's not that I just happened to have caught myself drinking wine on camera, you know. Uh, sure, I did already open this bottle, and I was already drinking it. Uh, but I chose specifically to film myself drinking it. Everything that you see is a choice when it comes to videos, right? So when you see someone drinking, ask what it means. What's the character trait I'm trying to portray? Am I trying to portray, like, what sort of person am I trying to show myself to be when I drink it, this? And what's interesting to me is how that differs from this. Exact same beverage, exact same alcohol content. Everything's exactly the same, except I'm drinking it out of a glass instead of out of a bottle. Why does that make a difference? Why do you see some YouTubers who choose to record their videos drinking out of this and I'm talking about videos that are not just like random gameplays where they happen to be drinking or whatever but I mean videos about other things that happen to include alcohol in the video for some sort of story or characterization effect why do some people drink here and why do some people drink here why do you see for example Digibo drinking straight out of the bottle why do you see Conjure Points drinking straight out of a glass or for that matter why would you see someone like this? We've got even more connotations here, haven't we? This is someone who wishes to present class, sophistication. This is someone who wishes to present the exact opposite. And simply by changing the vessel of the exact same beverage, our own internal associations change the meaning and the context behind the words said. If you hear me say something with the bottle in my hand, you're going to interpret it differently or it's coming from a different position than if you see me or hear me saying something with the glass in my hand. I'm starting to get quite drunk after drinking all of this wine. <laughs> so alcohol is fascinating. The social context behind alcohol they're fascinating to me. There's all these different ways you can make your visuals more interesting. Is it really better? Is this a better video because I've been showing my face in it over, I don't know, something like uh where I didn't show my face and it was all written down. Um, 
No. Yes. Maybe. Who knows? I'm just trying to think about this sort of shit. How can you make a shot, the standard YouTube shot, more interesting? I see a lot of interesting theories. I like the way, um, what's his name? Now it is a copyright legally distinct song. I can't get sued. I like the way Folding Ideas does it. He sits over here because that way he has pop-ups show in this corner of the screen. He has little GIFs or videos or text show up over here. And uh, firstly, he's using the rule of thirds because he is a YouTuber who mostly talks about film. So having some, he clearly knows about film theory. He knows the rule of thirds. Uh, so he's got the wall of thirds, which is already nice. He doesn't have this messy background. He just has a plain wall. It might even be a green screen. I don't know. Um, but he will sit over here in, in one third, and then he'll have text and images appear over here when they need to. I, I think he stole that from my dear channel. I say stole. was influenced from my dear channel to do that. Um, a lot of YouTubers do that, actually. But he's the one that comes to mind instantaneously. Because he does this interesting thing where he records every video twice. He records him reading the script twice. Once from a wide shot, and once from a closer shot. But every time he's always in one one third of the frame so that you have this continuity which I think is quite clever that way he can cut in and out for emphasis and also he has two takes to choose from when he needs to um, he might even do more I don't fucking know um, Dan Olson is, is his name there you go uh, so he does something like that which I think is a good way to make your video more aesthetically interesting but it's not the way to make your video more aesthetically interesting Everyone comes to different conclusions for this, for people who care about the aesthetics of their videos. Everyone seems to come to a different answer. Some people sort of compromise. I would, I would call this a compromise. Um, I would say this is halfway between standard YouTuber, centre frame, maybe with jump cuts and stuff. This is halfway between that and something that is more cinematically interesting, but it's mostly a utilitarian thing, so that there is space on the screen to show images and to show facts and data and words so it, it, it's halfway between sort of a utilitarian thing and an aesthetic thing and then you got people like um, me for example who will just shoot videos where it's literally me pointing the camera at darkened room uh, on my phone in uh, this quality you know something like this do you think this is incidental or do you think I've done this on purpose do you think there's some sort of meaning clearly by shooting a video like this, I am trying to tell you, the viewer, without saying it, something about my personality, something about how I want this to be consumed. Now check this out. It probably feels like I'm building up to some sort of intense plot moment where it's all revealed and I make my point, it all comes crashing down. But really, this isn't that sort of video. I don't actually have much of a thesis. If I did have a thesis, it would be pay more attention to the visuals in your videos. Anyone who posts anything on YouTube. Just consider the, um, the analytical implications of what you show. Consider how it may be interpreted because if you have a uh, something, if something feels off, if you haven't thought this through and something feels wrong about the visuals and about what you're saying, if they don't match up, if there's too much of a disconnect, not only are you going to drag where your audience is, which you know might be important to some of you, but more importantly, your message is going to get garbled. Your message is going to get all jumbled up because you can't help but interpret what you see on the film. You know, unless you, people don't even watch it. That's something that's different. That's something that's different about YouTube over, over film or TV is that with a film you can be pretty sure that every visual you show is going to be seen right if everyone who watches the film is watching a film whereas a lot of people on youtube just tab over and listen to videos right that's actually a very popular way of doing so and also a lot of people on youtube um watch videos on their phone in a very very small screen so the visuals can't be anything too complicated if you're pandering to that group if you want to get a lot of views you know, and even if you don't pan to that group, again, your message might get misconstrued because your connotations of what you're showing with the visuals and what you're saying with the with your words or, or whatever other audio you're showing, there could be some sort of weird disconnect there and you could send a different message than what you want to send. Um, we've been conditioned 
with this certain filmic language ever since we're children just culturally we have this this universal filmic language which is is sort of burned into us by everything we consume from when we're children right and when we see something that goes against it we feel it somehow we feel it if 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 someone breaks the rule of thirds i mean not the rule of thirds the I forgot what the fucking what it's called. It has a name, but if if someone breaks the eye line, like if you're doing a, a a dialogue here, let me bring you over here so that you can see. Yes, I was just talking to air because there you go. There's meanings. There's all sorts of meanings. If I'm having a dialogue with someone, you know what? I'll show it like this. So this is one of my videos. I made it as an example of sort of a dialogue scene. So here we can see this is what's going to stab. This is very very basic cinematography but this is what I was thinking so you got this establishing shot to show the two characters positions relative to the environment and relative to each other then we have an over the shoulder shot of this character when they're talking because you can see their face it indicates that they're talking even though there's no mouth movements you can tell that this is the character who's talking right because we've been conditioned by watching so many films and then when it changes you will notice when the camera switches to the other person talking even though it's the same voice and none of the characters mouth move we can tell that it's the other person talking because the camera has switched now notice something interesting which is that the eye line between the characters if you were to follow the characters eye lines as if it was an invisible line going from their eyes to each other or going from each character's nose like an invisible fishing line the camera never crosses that line throughout the whole video if i speed it up right that's not how you speed things up right even though I speed it up, you can tell the camera just switches between one shoulder and the other, but never crosses the eye line. This is so that you always know, like the the context of the cat, the characters in their environment, so it's never disorienting. Except now, when the camera sort of cuts in, right? There you go. It still hasn't crossed the eye line. It's just gone straight into it, but it still hasn't crossed the eye line. If you watch any film dialogue scene, you will notice that the camera rarely crosses the eye line uh, if it's well shot, and that's how you, you know, that's how you you're able to keep track of where these characters are relative to each other. And except here, the, you know, the shot changes to below them to a Dutch angle and stuff like that, and then you get the establishing shot to end it off. The sh the camera never crosses the eye line, right? Now in some films. Hold on a second. Now, in some films, uh, the camera will cross the eye line. In fact, this is quite a common technique that people use. Except you'll notice that when the camera does cross the eye line, it's at a pivotal moment in the conversation where the power dynamic changes or where something is revealed or something very important happens. You will normally see the camera literally do this. It'll be over one character's shoulder like this, and the camera will do this. You'll see it happen, right? You'll see it cross because that way you know, and then it will be on the other side of the eye line. But it will never cross the eye line without telling you if it's, you know, unless it's trying to be disorienting on purpose. Generally, a dialogue scene will never cross the eye line on purpose. Why was I talking about this? Was it just an example of cinematic language? I have no fucking clue. Why was I talking about this? What I'm trying to say is, is there an interesting shot? Is there any interesting shot? Can I make this shot interesting? Through through symbols, through, you know, I'm very limited. I can't move the camera while I'm talking, really. I can do this, I can pick it up and move it around a little, but I can't have like a nice camera, smooth camera movements. I don't have a cameraman. I can only do what I can reach. You know, generally it has to stay still, you know, and it has to, I, uh, I'm recording the audio with the inboard mic on my, computer you know i can only do so much i'm very limited is there a more interesting shot of my face probably not but especially with something like the hidamari bath scenes analysis i wasn't trying to show my face this film is not the 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 video is not about me especially with the hidamari bath scenes analysis the video is not about me the video is not about me the video is not about me it's about cinematography in itself, it's about what symbolism means and how everything is symbolism and therefore in the shots I used I purposefully tried to give examples of symbolism, the fan slowly coming to a stop, the beard being drank, the videos of my messy room, you know, it's all character building for a character you never see, um, stuff like that. And also it's a nod to the environmental storytelling of Hidemori's sketch. Um, 
you know, also all that sort of shit is the stuff I'm thinking about when I'm making my videos. And I'm, you know, I'm not saying my videos are any sort of cinematic masterpieces. All I'm saying is I put some semblance of thought into it, besides just like that looks good, which is fine. You can just do things because they look good. I'm not gonna come. You can't do things that look good. That's not gonna happen, right? But if you wanna be taken. I don't want to say take be taken seriously. That's not that sounds bad. That sounds completely not the message I'm trying to spread here. But um, if you want to, if you want your message to come across clearer, if you want to be able to express yourself more freely, that's probably a better way of mention of saying it. Um, you should put some thought into the, your visuals and what they mean. Um, not just if you make YouTube videos, but if you watch YouTube videos, you should put some thought into into how people shoot things. What the what were you seeing on screen? You should, you, should, you know, you, you maybe, maybe you don't want to. Maybe it'll ruin it for you. But personally, I find it quite interesting. Why has this certain person chosen to show this certain thing, even if it's not consciously? Why have they subconsciously chosen to do something like that? Or, or how? Or even if it, they, you don't want to think about intent at all. You know. What, what does what does it say to me that I see these two things juxtaposed? You know, that sort of shit fascinating to me. I find it very interesting. Which is where we get to the ultimate in what I would, well, I don't know if I, if I can objectively say this, but probably the ultimate in in high production value YouTube visuals. Casey Neistat. He clearly, clearly puts thoughts into his visuals. He has such a distinctive visual style that you can instantly tell when someone is influenced by him. It's so obvious because you can see all his trademarks, right? He has this very distinct visual style that he's perfected over the years. The age for the storytelling reinforces is the reinforces is the messages is, <laughs> um, and you know looks good as well, aesthetically pleasing, and none of it with any like. I mean, sure, he has like drones and expensive cameras, but but it's, it's none of it's with a cameraman normally. He's normally just filming himself, you know, and putting stuff on a tripod. The drones are only are really the only complicated thing he uses. Like, it's nothing out of reach for the average person, besides the drones. Um, and he sort of perfected this visual storytelling element. You know, he, you can when when he has text on screen, it's always fucking huge, normally. It's big, center, even covering stuff up, right? You, you, you know, a lot of YouTube channels have failed to develop a distinctive visual style, especially gaming channels. It's very hard to have a distinctive style when you're talking about gaming or when you're talking about um, media analysis because generally with media analysis, what people do is they will just show the media they're talking about. Um, like if you watch an analysis of a game, you'll just see gameplay from that game. Often it'll be like what the person is talking about at that moment, like, um, the gunplay in this game is better, blah, 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 and it'll, they'll show, a, but like them doing the gunplay or you know something like that. But other than that, like there's nothing very particularly interesting. It's mostly very utilitarian and doesn't really help with any sort of artistic message, um, which is fine. There's, there's nothing illegal about that, you know. There's nothing illegal about it. You're allowed to do things like that. It's fine. But if you want to take, if if you want me. I don't care about anyone else. If you want me to really think your videos are next level, then then you got to do something more interesting with with the visuals because YouTube is a visual medium, and this is especially interesting to me because YouTube is also the biggest music streaming platform. And so many times you look at a song, and the album is the, it's just the album art and the song playing in the background, which is fine because ninety percent of the time, all you want to do is put the song out, so, so on in the background. Which is fine because 90% of the time, all you want to do is put the song on in the background. However, there's something really cool when you see a song with a visualizer to go along with it, or a little music video or something. You just think, ah, they've put effort into this YouTube release. You know, it it reinforces. And plus, you see things like Flume's latest album has a visualizer for the whole album. And when I normally, I, if I was gonna, I would. You know, I would have listened to that Flume album. I would have maybe listened to a couple tracks, or maybe the whole thing. I would have listened to it in the back background while playing a game or browsing some website or something like that, right? But because it had this visualizer and the visuals so interesting, and all the visuals enhanced, like they were, it wasn't like random shit to go along with the songs. The, the visuals were clearly had loads of effort put into them and were specifically made for each song, right? I sat down and I did nothing but watch and listen to the whole album, right, from start to finish, which made me pay more attention to the music. 
I probably wouldn't have thought that much of the music of the album if it wasn't for those visuals. You know, it's a cool album and all, but but everything it draws you in. That's what makes that so special. Stuff like that is so special. It's it's great. It's I love it. I love when people do that. It's just that extra, the extra thing, going the extra mile, the extra step that a lot of people won't take. Um, so yeah, apply. There's been nothing written about this. So there's been nothing written about this. You can't find this in academic journals. Maybe you can. I haven't looked. But I'm assuming you can't find this in academic journals. You've got 100 years of film studies, of film analysis, cinematic analysis. But who's written about the styles, the conventions, the tropes, the techniques of YouTube or online video production? Um, like, this is, this is a brand new field. This is like a whole new wave of shit that we're seeing. And yet, we're all being encouraged to do the same shit because people are used to the same shit, and so we're all being coached to do the same shit. And this is not a YouTube-only problem. You know, it's very easy to say like, oh, that's just because YouTube is a terrible platform. And YouTube is a terrible company. Google's a terrible company. However, most films have pretty boring, flat direction. Most TV shows have pretty boring, flat direction. You, it, It's the occasional one that sets the trends. It's, it's your occasional, like, Twin Peaks, or your occasional, I don't know, you know, you you got like your Avengers films, they're shot so boringly, you got your Michael Bay films shot like shit, edited, especially the editing in Michael Bay films, I hate, I can't stand it, right, and then occasionally you get something like, someone like Wes Anderson comes along with a, a relatively unique directorial voice, and you're like, ah, something that actually, it gives, you know, it, it changes the whole atmosphere of everything, there's something called, okay, I'm going to bring out a big, one of my favorite big words to throw around the, to prove that I know shit about shit. Okay, you ready? Pay attention. The Kuleshov effect. The Kuleshov effect is something in cinematic theory, film theory, that shows or states that um, the information contained within a cut between two different scenes uh, can give more information than those two scenes separately. The cut between them gives more information. Let me give you an example. That was something called a shot reverse shot. What I did was I showed you me, and then I showed you the object I was looking at. Now, those two shots differently, like separately on their own context, you, all you have is a shot of a person and a shot of a, like a, a coffee or a French press thing, right? But when you put them together, you cut them together, you get an extra piece of information, which is that I am looking at the coffee thing, right? And then you get the reaction as well, but that's an extra thing, right? I have to be quiet because my mum's asleep, so I have to close the door real quietly behind me and I have to be real quiet and I'll never come back. I'll be really quiet and then we're... So anyway, um... <laughs> That is the cooler shelf effect. You get an extra piece of information from the cut. Uh, and you know, has any YouTuber, what, what YouTubers are paying attention to shit like that? I don't know, maybe they are, maybe a lot of, maybe, but, but what I'm saying is, that's something that applies in film and it's gonna apply in YouTube as well, but it could be used in all sorts of inventive ways in YouTube that it couldn't be, or not just YouTube, but online video, all this sort of shit that it isn't used in traditional film. You got a whole world in front of you, and yet all you do to use the same shot of a vlogger looking into the camera talking about shit. This is a really boring shot. Postscript. Um, I didn't even talk about all the ways you can fuck with your shots in editing like this. Uh, a lot of people do this too. Well, at least in my communities that I'm a part of, people use it for effect and shit like that. But, uh, have you ever considered you wouldn't have to resort to gimmicky editing shit all the time uh, if you paid more attention to how you shot things in the first place? Not that there's anything wrong with this, but, uh, I feel like it's best used sparingly for emphasis rather than as a general aesthetic. But, you know, if you can do it better than me, by all means use it to say something artistic. Uh, by all means do so, it's great. Something that you wouldn't really accept in a movie or, you know, by all means it's great, but, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting shit to me.